Okay, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this question is from Mycroft, Queen of England. Hi, Mycroft, Queen of England. And it's something, it goes something like this. <laughs> Seawall is like a raw, open wound of humanity. Did writing this leave you needing to bandage that vulnerability or did, did it connect you on the basis of levels to humankind as a whole? It's a, re it's a good question. It's a great question. I think you read it really beautifully as well. I thought I fucked it up. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to have another go? Yeah, yeah go on. Have another. No, no, no. <laughs> um, well, actually, what's because what, what's the question is actually about is was it upsetting to read that or was yeah. it to write it to write it was it upsetting to write it or was it uplifting to write it? And I always find writing uplifting, whatever I'm writing. Uh, and Seawall, in comparison to some of my other plays, actually. <laughs> Is, is kind of, uh, it's very gentle. It's quite a gentle, quite mm. a generous play. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a play which is com completely informed the possibility of love. You compare it to something like Waswater, which was the last play I had produced. Uh, no, Trial of Uber and Waswater, and they're both really kind of dark plays. Yeah. There's a kind of cruelty in those plays, especially Waswater. Um, but even writing something like Waswater or writing something like Motortown or something like Punk Rock, which are plays which have, you know, acts of extreme violence and cruelty at the heart of their conception. The process of writing it always feels great. Yeah. So Motortown, you know, has this kind of brutal scene yeah. at the heart of it. I remember writing that scene. I remember wa watching that scene in rehearsal with the brilliant Danny Mays and Ani oh God, gorgeous actors. And Danny's a really special actor. Oh, he's a going, actor. going to rehearsal and watching him play that scene, thinking, what have you written? Yeah. What have you written? Because the process of writing uh, was never informed by that kind of spirit of savagery. It just felt great. Yeah. It felt, I think uh, Oliver Sacks has talked about uh, creativity and the relationship between creativity and nostalgia, and he talks about how nostalgia and creativity come from the same part of the human brain, and they come from the same impulse, and, one, and, and they're both born out of a need to complete something that was interrupted, or to repair something that was broken. We feel nostalgic about things. The experiences that we feel nostalgic about are often experiences which in some way were interrupted, or in some way were broken. Right. You know? And creativity comes from the same place. And he suggested that we make art, that we write, or we make paintings in order to try and repair something that was broken yeah. or complete something that was interrupted. So I think whatever I'm writing, that's how it feels. And it always, I think in that sense, it connects me to, on the basis level to humankind as a whole. As a whole. <laughs> because it does sort of, there's an, there was another question which is from Katerina six on Twitter and mm -hmm. um, which is will Alex be happy again someday which is a sort of huh. you know like because I mean do you think about that apart from you know when you say it feels great mm. do you think like the way the way you were asking do I think to what was Alex like when he was nine do mm. you think about where Alex no was nine or when I, he's I think this is the interesting thing about yeah. this interview is that we're discovering that we have a lot in common yeah yeah absolutely and not only our shared supermarket experience quite <laughs> but um I was speaking to the magnificent writer Robert Holman last night oh, about yeah. his play Making Noise Quietly that I saw last night at the Donmar Warehouse. Probably by the time this is on the internet, it'll have finished. <laughs> but nevertheless, everybody watching it should go and buy yeah. as many Robert Holman plays, yeah. Robert Holman, yeah. as you can get your hands on. And he said something amazing about one of his characters, was because I was talking about this character, and he said, you realise he, he dies? And I was very, very confused by the observation. I said, well, what? He said, he dies in his 30s. What, what, Robert? What are you doing? And in, for him, the characters have a life separate from the life of the play, and the play just captures a moment of their lifetime. God, that's extraordinary. And after the play finishes, he imagines completely the rest of their life, and it's an extraordinary insight into his imagination. For me, the play, the car Alex isn't real. Mm. Alex doesn't exist. Yeah. Alex is something that happens when you or the other actors I've seen play him in or Germany. You. Or yeah, yeah, so weirdly, when, you, when I've yeah, done yeah. readings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you do a reading, like, that must be a totally different, different um, 
experience reading it? Because you haven't read you haven't read a lot of your work. No, it's the only thing I've ever read. It's the only thing I've ever read. Yeah. Yeah. So talk, we'll talk, we'll talk about that. Was that weird? Yeah, but it's uh, I, it's strangely enjoyable. Yeah. But I come from it from a very, I think partly it's a different because I'm. N when I read it, it's always importantly billed as Simon Stevens reads Seawall. Yeah. In a way that we'd never really bill unless we were doing this in commercial theatre. Yeah. And now that you've been baffed and nominated, we might. <laughs> 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 you know, Andrew Scott performs Seawall. Yeah. You know, the, exper the experience of a writer reading their own work is different to an actor performing it. Yeah, that's what so, I was going to say. So cause people I will seen go, it. The people, people will go. Part, partly people will go, when you go and see a writer reading their own work, you're partly going for the work, you're partly going for the writer. Yeah. And that's true when people go to the theatre. And people do, you know, clearly with the yeah. film, most people have come to the film in order to watch you do something. Mm. Um, uh, but I'm very self-conscious. I'm, I think, importantly self-conscious as the writer of the thing. And part of that self-consciousness is I know, I know what's going to happen and I quite enjoy it in a way that I never really got from your performance, but maybe you did, I don't know. That you know that... I know she dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a really, really interesting question. Yeah. yeah. And I, you play I, against I, that? I, yeah, but I kind of, I kind of really love, I love it. <laughs> I love, yeah. I, I, you know, I love... Uh, so the prof so did you stand up or did you no I just sat you, down you sat down and you read sat it. down and read it with and, the script in my hand and did you look at them or did you connect no I them? looked at them all the yeah. time I did I tried to replicate yeah. that thing yeah of looking at the audience yeah. and la and and engaging with their laughter yeah. yeah yeah but I was just aware that I was the writer so it was I, yeah. I was slightly less nervous about it than I would be if I was performing somebody else's monologue for example but there must never do I'd never do but One. what about the characterization then do you feel because it's because it comes from I didn't do any pretending to be anybody else yes yeah, so you were me. Simon yeah I was Simon completely yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. then did you feel did you f did you feel like Simon or did you feel like Alex I've done it about five or six times now and every time I felt like Simon, yeah. apart from, for some reason, one time in Vienna, I do this thing in Vienna, which is really enjoyable, uh, with um, uh, an actor there of, uh, he, he reads in German, he'll read it, but he reads in German, I read in English, and we do it paragraph by paragraph. Oh, I, I read the paragraph in English, uh, and then he'll translate it into German. And it's really enjoyable, and there was one night we did this in Vienna, and for some reason, when it got to the scene on the beach, yeah, I, I, the clarity with which I pictured yeah. Scarlett, my daughter, there, I almost had to kind of stop. Yeah, yeah. it was really weird. It was yeah. really weird. But even then, I'm still being Simon. I'm yeah, not being yeah. Alex. You, you know, you, you feel safe. Yeah. 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 And did you ever do any acting? Not, uh, not to any serious level. I did a bit at university and a bit at school. But never. never you never. Was. You were never interested because you're very. Inter you're very interested in actors, and you're very. Yeah. You write brilliantly, obviously, for yeah. for actors. But you never wanted to. I don't think so. I don't think so. I. I don't think so. I think I quite like. I just quite like this relationship. Actually. Yeah, yeah. It's quite like the possibility of giving a script to somebody like you, or you know, the other actors. You know, Leslie Sharp in Harper Regan, Tom oh, Sturridge yeah. in Punk Rock, yeah. Danny Mays in Motortown. Just that kind of mm. when the whole is more than the sum of the individual constituent parts. Yeah. And I never. It's fun. It's really funny. I'd never. I think probably in the end, it's probably related to my own sense of my physicality. Right. And I think it's interesting because I'm quite tall. Yeah. And I think I've, and I've been tall all my life. Mm. I wasn't somebody who shot up. Yeah. So my relationship to my body, there's a little bit of kind of just, it's only in my 30s that I started enjoying being tall. How amazing, yeah. I hated being tall yeah. as a teenager and in my 20s. And so my posture's really, yeah. really fucked. And I think to be an actor, you've got to enjoy your own body. You've got you, well. You, you've got. I suppose the thing is, you can't. Uh, y y even if you do, if you have to play a sexy person, 
you have to do it. Yeah, you, for sure. You have to do it. No, you know, for sure. But thing. even even then, even it's not even that. It's just the fact that you're 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 a physical entity on a stage yeah. or on a, or on a or on a set yeah. in, a, in a film. You know, it's a physical thing you're doing. Yeah. Um, and if you're writing, it's an it's an intellectual thing. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, or uh, you know, it's emotional, but it's something made up in your head. Yeah. And I think I quite like that. <laughs> yeah. The process of making things up in my head, rather than acting things out in my body. How interesting. I've never ever thought about that before or said that out loud. <laughs> I really, I'm really nervous that that's going to come back. <laughs> no, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely fascinating.